Welcome to the continuation of our Fast Track Online Learning Modules. In this session, we'll be looking at the System Module, or as it's referred to here, CRM. It may be different compared to what you have in front of you. Um, and in particular, we're going to have a look at the creation of new users, uh, new positions, and new persons, and how this is really integral to how the Fast Track system operates. So to assist you in the training and for your future reference, the system user manual is available uh, via the Fast Track website or by contacting us here. A lot of the training in this module will be based on, that, on the manual, so it's certainly recommended and having it alongside you uh, for now and for future reference. But firstly, before we go ahead, uh, we'll get a little bit of background on this system function itself. And firstly, we'll just have a look at it, some common definitions and the importance of the organisational structure within Fast Track. So the first one I'm going to have a look at is position. So position is represented here by organisation. So I'm in CRM, I'm in the organisation, and it brings up the positions there for us. Now, a position is created to reflect all the position titles within the organisational structure, regardless of whether or not they have access to Fast Track. A position must be linked to a, a person record. So for every position that we see here, it's linked to a person has that position. Um, this allows any documents and records and tasks to be assigned to people within the organisation. So you don't have to have a person for each position for that position to exist. But to assign documents, users need a person record, a position, and they need a user account. Now the user here is the login, and the position is the security around that login. All right, so the next one we're going to have a look at is the person record. So I'm just going to select next to it here, person. You see it brings up a list of people within the library or departments that they are, and the libraries are generally the departments, yeah. Um, so a person record captures details of a specific person, such as their email address, their name, their address, etc. And a person record should exist for all the, all the positions and all the users as well. And finally, the last one we have here is users. And we can see here that we have user, uh, user accounts. Um, a user account needs to be linked to a position. And uh, the account must be created uh, to allow any staff member to access Fast Track. Great. All right. So the setup of Fast Track users is designed really to work in line with the company's organisational structure. So any relevant groups, divisions or departments and roles must be set, set up to ensure that the fast track process flow and the escalation abilities function correctly. And we'll see that a little more as we continue through. So user accounts can, be only, can only be created when the positions, so these user accounts can only be created when the positions and the persons have been created. So it's therefore really suggested that when setting any user account to set up, they're set up in the following order of doing the person record first, of doing the, attaching that or creating a position for it to go to, and then adding a user ID for it. And I can best show you how they're interlinked by this quick diagram. And we can see here the user account at the top, the last one we would create, which gives you access to the system. That user account is linked to the position and the position holds the ownership of the records. Now, the user account is also attached to the person. Now, the ownership of the records are where the task goes to. The tasks are sent to the positions. Uh, so, and the position has a person linked to it, which has the email address, which is how the people are linked there. So hopefully that gives you a bit of better idea about how that works. Every position must be connected to a department, and this includes all the functional managers. So departments must be connected to, to groups. And I can show you that by what we have is we would have groups as an example, then we have the departments or divisions under it, and the people within that. And user accounts would be attached to those people within that department. 
at the group level one, this I show you, which is the group level, at group level we call level one, uh, should be set up for all functional groups within the organization. So this really, this group one level acts as a parent directory for all the company's divisions or departments. So there shouldn't be any positions that reside at this group level, at this level one. Therefore, even if you do have, in this example, we have a group manager in operations, then a separate division underneath that level two would need to be created for that person and any other people working within that as well, such as, you know, I don't know, officers, assistants, secretaries, etc. So even though this doesn't exactly represent the organisation, uh, organisational structure, positions exist solely at the divisional level or lower, which allow the correct reporting structure to be achieved. Okay. So we'll now have a little look at how we add these people to, uh, to it. So for, firstly, we're going to remember our basic navigation. We have our module menu, our function menu, and our library menu. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to take that three-step process of the person. We're going to create a person, attach it to a position, and give it a user. So we're going to go to system or CRM first. We're going to create a person. And now we have the libraries here on the left-hand side. And we need to decide where we want to, what, where do we want to, uh, this position to be created, under which department. So, for this example, we'll say we'll create this person under uh, consultants and specialists. Okay. So, for every position that exists within the system, a corresponding, for, so for every position, a corresponding person record must also exist. The person record is used to set the email address, so where those notifications, the reminders would be delivered to for a specific record or a task. So for example, if a corrective action was assigned to the quality document controller, which was a role being fulfilled by Bob Smith, then the email for that corrective action will be delivered to the email address against Bob Smith's person record. And we're going to do that now. So to create someone, we're going to say we're in module, function, the library we want to create the person, and now on the upper process menu, we have create. And now it's showing us the window where we need to add information around this person. Yellow information is information that is mandatory for, uh, for this, so you have to add information to it. White means that it is just uh, optional, and you don't need to add information in there. Gray fields, which you will see, cannot be changed. So the person reference will be the reference that, uh, of, that per of the person uh, within the company. So uh, I'm going to use myself as an example. So I might be, my person reference may be, when I log on, it may be desk on it here. Um, next, we, have the, the, we can add an employee number if we wish. The name, which are the mandatory fields. A start date, I can access a start date by just selecting the calendar and it brings me, gives me today's date already. I want today's date, I select it and it will auto populate that for me. Below that we have phone number and mobile which can be entered and below that is that really important one that I discussed earlier, is that email where we need to get that right so all those notifications, those tasks, those schedules get to that person. So. Let's say and we can also attach a location. A lo uh, anytime you see a magnifying glass would mean that you can access further information to add into this field. So we select the magnifying glass and we can add a location for that person. Highlighting it, selecting save. Next, below that we have the status. Is the person current? Are they on probation? Are they active or is it terminated? In this case, we're going to say it's, it's current. The person type as well, again, we could select that to add a person type for there. Next, the real relevance within here is the position. The position is the person or the manager. So I'm going to select on that and what it'll do is it'll give me a three 
window box and wish to make my selection. In the first box on the top left hand side we have the departments or areas within there. By selecting on any of these it will show me the managers that would be allocated to that section. So if I wanted to find a, a manager uh, I would select whatever area it may be. We'll select Bob Marley, he's a quality manager, hit save and it now populates Bob in there for me. Likewise, if I wanted to remove Bob or change anybody else out of there, I could just select who I wanted, highlight, and it would change that for me. It would auto also auto-populate a business unit. So now we've provided the information that we need around to create a person record within here. We hit OK in the bottom right hand corner, confirm that we're done and we can see that that person record has now been created with the person reference as well. We also have the date that was created and who is the owner of that person as well. So we've now created a person record. If we needed to modify a person record at any time, say for a name, a change of email address or, or, or any change of details to a person's record, which can happen, we can certainly do that just by again following that navigation of going into the system, the person, finding the relevant library that that, that, that person may be in. So if I, needed to, if I was in the top library and I needed to find me, I can type my name into the top here, search, and it will bring me to that one there. If I need to modify that record, I can double click on it and I can change any details that I need to. So, I can change that to now to Stephen.donoq. Okay, and we'll oh, actually, change my name. Okay, hit OK. Oh, needs a business unit. That's the business unit. I just gave it a business unit. OK. Select done. And we can see now that it's changed my name there as well, just by modifying that person record, just by going in and selecting it. By going back in there again, you can see that that person reference is a grayed out, grayed out field. And I mentioned earlier that grayed out fields are fields that we can't change. There's they are only uh, you can only not change them if you don't have the administration function that is on this upper process menu. So if we wanted to change that person reference, we could certainly do that. So we would go into the record via that, base, that navigation that we use, and we select in the upper process menu admin. And now it brings up further administration only administration functions. What we're going to do is we're going to change the person reference or the person ID. We will click change person ID and now it's just going to ask me simply what is that new person ID I'm going to give them. We can also see in the left top left hand corner here we have the old person ID and who that is attached to. So let's say we're changing that to just S here. I select OK. Confirm that I'm done, and we can see now that it's changed that person reference for me. But again, that changing any person references or position references is always an administration function. Great, so we've now added a per created a person and know how to modify that person should we should uh, should the need arise. The next thing we need to do by following that three step process is to create or attach this person to a position within the organisation. There's one of two ways that we can do this. One is by creating a position, should it be a new position, or by attaching it to a position that is already created. We'll be exploring both methods. So, my basic navigation, I'm going to be looking at system or CRM and organisation. And we can see now it brings up areas of divisions, departments and whatnot there in, within my libraries. One of the unique characteristics of the fast track system is its, is its uh, dependency on, the, on these positions rather than the people. 
This means that as staff come and go and as positions are refilled, um, previous tasks and records can simply be reallocated to the new person that is now in that position. So positions should not be deleted. If they are, it's really important to ensure that all previous records are assigned uh, or reallocated to another position before deleting them. Positions are, uh, are used to assign ownership of records and tasks in Fast Track. So this means even if a specific staff member does not have access to the Fast Track system, they can still be assigned a record or a task. And in any such cases, receive all the notifications that would be associated with it. And remember um, that positions can only be created on that level two or lower libraries in the organisational structure. So let's have a look at creating a position. So we're going to need to create it in what area? We're going to say compliance. And we'll say this person, so we're in system, position, the library that we want. Now we have that upper process menu. To create a position, we need to go into organisational structure. And it now brings up further functionality. We're going to add a position here. Add position. And we can see that it brings up, again, like adding the information for a new person, we'll need to do this for a new position. So the position reference would be just a short abbreviation of how the role would be referred to by the company. So for this role, we're going to call it a training uh, administrator, T-R-A-D-M. It populates the date as being lodged. Who it's been recorded by is being automatically populated. And now we need to give this position a name, which means and I don't, a name in terms of who is fulfilling this position. It is auto-populated at the moment, but by selecting the magnifying glass, we will be able now to look at, at, look at people that have been created within the system. Our person that we just created, we can create it as a consultant and a specialist. And we have the departments here. Consultants and specialists. And as we look down the list here, we can see my name, where, I've been cre where it's created. Hit save, and it's saved there. Showing recorded by as by Greg Carroll because I'm logged in under Greg's ID. The title is the title of, of the position. So we're going to call this a training administrator. And we can also add who they report to as well by that three window process. So what department is it that they're going to be reporting into? So it's compliance. We have the positions within there. We say they're going to be reporting into the quality manager. We have the quality manager and it populates that there for us. The index reference here is what indexes can this position ref uh, out, um, be able to access. Again, by selecting here, it gives you a list of all the libraries or library indexes and you can select what they have access to. The position grade, another magnifying glass there, you can see give them the position a grade. The owner is the manager, so who is the manager of, the, of, of it? So again, the department, we'll say it's quality manager, reports to the quality manager who is Bob Marley, hit save and it populates that for us. Also populates the, that relevant person's unit or business unit. The status of the position, a drop down menu, is either a contract, permanent, part time or closed. And in this case we'll say it's a contract. Hit OK, confirm that we're done and we have now created a position there. We can see TRA ADM, the trainee administrator, who that person, who was attached to that position and who the owner of that position is as well. So we've now created a person and attached that per person to a position which we created as well. Okay, so 
if we needed to change the details of that position, it's a similar way that we used to change a person's details. So you would go in via that module function, find the position that you needed to, double click on it, and you could change any details you need around that. Perhaps the owner has changed, or perhaps the name has changed, that somebody else now occupies that position, and now you could add somebody else to it, which is where, where whereby they would receive any tasks that are alloc allocated to that position would now be allocated to that person. Okay. So we've created a person, a position, and the last thing we need to do is create a user. So module function is now user. The library is going to be user login. So we're going to be creating a user login. User accounts are created to enable access into Fast Track, and each account, account must have a related owner profile and a person record. So a, a position and person record must be created before the user, and we've done that, the person, the position. Okay, so let's create a new user. So module function library, and we're going to create. Firstly, we need to say who is the new person that it is. So we're going to search for that person that we created under consultants and specialists. Steve Donahue highlights in that third box, which means we can now save it. And now, once we've done that, it populates further fields for us, gives us the user ID and the position reference. We have the business unit as well. Uh, over here, we have on access index, the access index refers to the index that the document user or the user can open. So if you wanted to be able to give them access to just specific documents, you would go into the library indexes and you could select which documents that, that, are, that they would be able to have access to. Said documents generally means it's a master list of all documents, which means they can view everything. This again is all listed within the training manual. The change index is the index of documents that users can edit. So again, similarly, if you want to be able to give them edit rights on only certain things, you can be able to select that via that window. So for it would be in the library, and I'm going to let them have be able to set docs access to all. The issue index is the index of documents that uses conversion. So if somebody is allowed to update and version, reversion that document, then they will have Z docs in here for access to all of them, or you can select what access rights they would like within that. Mandatory information. We can provide any details. Is the status, again, it's current, and that's the information we need to provide. Oh, user profile, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. The user profile, really important in terms of what kind of rights are we going to give this user. Are they an administrator, which gives them great all rights? A manager, manager rights, which is less than an administrator. A user, just a user, or somebody, a viewer, who's just able to view. So for this one, we're going to say admin. It's now populated admin within that role. Hit OK. Confirm that we're done and it's now created a new user for that person. So that person would now use that person reference uh, uh, to log in. So when they log into Fast Track, it would use that person ID, that user ID, and it would either use the password of password or it would just log in automatically using the password that they use to log into the system. It's one of those two, password or it just logs in automatically. All right, so we have created a, a, a person, a position, and a user now, and attached that to it. If we wanted to modify this user account, we can simply do that same way that we modified a position and we modified a person. We go into the module, the function, the user login. We can double click on it and we can change anything that we need to. Maybe it's the user ID, maybe it's the access levels that they have there, maybe it's the user profile, 
whatever that may be, I could make those changes there. Hit OK and done. Uh, one other thing before we move on uh, that I'd like to show you is if I go into the module function, I go into the person record and we have that person record that I created. I double click on it and now we have this lower process menu along the bottom here. The lower process menu is really used as functionality within this record type. And two things I'd really like to show you as handy things for you to, to know. Firstly, we have the history. If you hover over them, they'll usually produce more functionality below. If I click history, it will show me the history of this person record. So we can see that when it was created, you can see that we changed the business unit at one point there, and we can also see that a new reference, person reference was, was changed there as well. So we have that. That's the, it will always show a history for that. If I wanted to find out further information around that the history record, I could select it by clicking the grey box, and that would open up further information around that record. Now, if that information had been entered when the person record was created, then it would show up here. So that's history. The next one that I really wanted to show you was attach as well, which is next here. Here we can attach anything to a, any record that is created within Fast Track. So if I hover over attach, if I click on attach, it would show me if there is any attachments here. At the moment, there's none. If I wanted to add one though, I hover over it and I select add. So it may be a case that this is a person record that we may attach maybe a photo ID uh, a copy of a contract, uh, anything like that that may be related to that person record that may be pertinent there. So here now, it's asking me what is the subject, what is it I'm going to attach. I'm going to say I'm going to attach a photo and then it's going to ask me to browse for it. Brings up the fast track browse window, I click browse and the photo, I'm going to attach a photo. Now it brings across the file name there and I must hit attach to make that attach. File uploaded successfully, I can close and it's in there. I can also here add any remarks around that, so if that may be that it is a photo ID or whatever it may be, whoever the person who's doing this and if I needed to notify anybody about this attachment or about this change taking place, I can do this as well. This is done by the involved field. We can see in this involved field it has a question mark up to the right hand side. The question mark allows you to nominate people who would you would like to be involved or, or, to, or to know about this change. So click the question mark, it brings up a list of, depart of departments or areas and I can select anybody within that. So I'm going to let the quality manager know that that has occurred. Once I've done that, I click OK, confirm that I'm done, and we can see that that attachment now has been added on there as well. So that's how we would add a, uh, an attachment and a history there as well. Just a few things around that lower process menu. So before we finish up, a couple more, just a couple of quick things. Um, We'll now have a look at some administration functions, which we briefly looked at before. So we're in uh, system or CRM, persons, and I'm going to select here on the upper process menu, admin. And that, what that does, that brings up for me, I'm going to come out and consult this there. It brings up for me a list of administration functions that you have. And I'd like to go through a couple of those for you. First one that we have here is master. The master function allows you to view the complete details of the record and it's often referred to as master info. So it just gives you a lot of information around that record that has been, been selected. Much like double clicking on it on an item, it brings up similar information. Um, the next one that we have uh, within that is move and this one will be used to move any records from one uh, to another. 
So to, if I wanted to move somebody, and I'm not going to do this right now, I can, I'll, I'll show you how to do it though, is I would select a record, I could select move, and I would select which library or where is it that I wish to move that to. Now I can also give that a new rec record reference number. If it's a new library, it may need a new record reference number and I can give it that. If I leave it blank, it will keep the same record reference number, but I can also type in allocate and that would allocate a record refer a reference number for it there as well. So that's how you would do that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to reopen uh, a, a record as well. And I'll do that by finding ones that aren't around anymore. To reopen a record, you'd simply, we're going to go into persons, should be, I don't know here. Um, administration function, I click reopen and it will allow me to reopen any record that has been closed. Um, so I provide a reason within that, um, a reason for it, a who to do, a who to do is much like an involved, so who do we want to notify around that and the next date would be the date that they would receive that notification around that and also can add any comments. So you can reopen records by unclicking the current box and any old records would show which you would you like to, which may need to be reopened. Uh, remove entry allows you to remove an attachment or history or schedule uh, from from an object. We'll have a go at that. We have one attached. We attach one to this to myself here. So I double click on that. I click attach. This should be my attachment there. If I want to remove that, I go to remove entry. And I need to take note of before I go to remove entry. What I should have done is is take note of that transition number. You really need that transition number. One eight three nine nine. Go back into remove entry, select component. Uh, oh, that's the right, so one eight three nine nine. Uh, select component. What is it? It is an attachment. So type in attach, and I can OK that. Done. Go back into the record, into attachments, and it's now removed that attachment there that we added earlier. The delete function that we have here as well, deleting a, a record permanently removes the record from the system. I can't stress that highly enough. Therefore, not all users are given rights to delete records. Um, so if you select so if you have any record that you have selected here, if you wanted to delete it, I can go to, I mean, I wanted to delete this one. I go to delete. It's going to warn me. This will permanently delete it. I hit OK. And it's now removed from there as well. So that's really it with regards to, the, uh, with regards to um, rather than deleting, what we always recommend that you do is you cl rather close a record. So if I wanted to close a record rather than do that, I would select that record, I can hit close. We can get down any details around that if we like. I select OK, confirm that it's OK, and we can now see that it's gone as it's closed. But if I wanted to bring it back, I unclick it, and we can see now that it's showing me any ones that are uncurrent as well. If I wanted to reopen that, I can click reopen. I can add any details, remember a reason. Um, now current. I can add somebody to it to let them know. Maybe there's somebody in compliance that I want to make aware of that, that they're coming back, and I can add any comments. Great. And that now brings that person back. So they're now, if I tick current, 
they're now current as well. So that's it in terms of being able to add new people to the system, the fast track system via that CRM or system function. Just remembering using always adding a person, attaching it to a position or creating a position, and then giving it a user as well. So best of luck with that. If you have any troubles, please don't hesitate to contact us.